My name's Aaron. Aaron Butterworth is my name. You probably picked up what my name is from the title block at the beginning of this clip here, so I wasn't thinking. Sorry about that. I haven't done a video for a very long time. You'll notice that my YouTube channel is 4 Minute Man. I started making videos a years ago and then I stopped because my life fell apart because I stopped becoming one of Jehovah's Witnesses, actually. Um, you'll see in this video, I've made like four goes at it. You never know what to say. You never know how to say it. Um, but I'm making this video as to why I'm no longer Jehovah's Witness. Maybe, well, none of my friends talk to me anymore who were witnesses and my family doesn't talk to me anymore. So mainly it's there for people who are waking up and when you're going through that wake up stage, it's really hard. Your world falls from underneath you. They fall apart, actually. So you'll see that I've got a beard. Hey. A lot of people go, oh, why do you always grow a beard when you're no longer Joseph? Because I had 46 years of having to shave. Okay? And so, hated every moment of it. You can't just be yourself. You've got to be shaved. And three meetings a week. On top of that, you've got your pre-study, you're witnessing, knocking on doors on the weekends. You have no life. You are a slave to them. So yeah, I grew a beard. So you'll see, but in the rest of the video, that I don't have a beard. Because I've been working on this, and I just want to get it out there for people... I found it very helpful when I started waking up looking at videos to see that we have a shared experience and um, that shared experience makes you realize that you're not a mental case that you, there are other people who are going through what you've been through so that's what this video is for so um, there's a couple of times I'm going to jump in on it because I watched it and I was like ah, that needs a bit more clarification and so I will clarify where it needs to be and hopefully it will be a clear story as to why I'm no longer Job's Witness. Uh, and I apologise in advance for the quality, because I am not Steven Spielberg, believe it or not. So yeah, uh, thank you for watching the video, and I hope this helps you if you're going through it, or if you've been through it, um, just to know that we're not alone. Sometimes it feels like you are alone when your family doesn't speak to you or your friends don't speak to you and everyone disowns you but we're not alone and life can move on so enjoy the movie and thanks for watching all right now that i've gone yeah so basically i was born into it mm -hmm. it's not much to tell there is there born into it um uh i just want to jump in here because <clears throat> it's easy to say I was born into it. There you go, see you later. Uh, I want to make a couple of notes that if my parents ever do watch this, they were 27 when they took on this religion. So they never went through school as a Jehovah's Witness. So really they've got no idea of what that's like. Um, my earl earliest memories, I'm going to make this as quick as I can, right? Okay. Uh, but I've only got one go at the video. So uh, I'm going to put it all out there. Um, it's easy to say, yeah, born into it, see you later. Personally, my childhood was not too bad. But you suppress things like being flogged at the at the Kingdom Hall for not sitting for two hours as a four or six year old kid. You know, three year old, I was a baby. My earliest memories are waking up on the, on the floor under the seats while the song was going. And I do remember getting flogged, taken, taken, walked out in front of everyone and flogged on the main road because I wasn't being quiet as a child, you know what I mean? So little things like that, you suppress, if you're a positive person, you suppress all the bullshit that you have to go through, excuse me for the language. But even growing up in a school, when you're the odd one out, you know, it. Uh, the funny thing is they call us apostates, right? These animals that run this show called The Watchtower. <clears throat> but your parents make you raise you to stand up for what you believe in no matter what and I'll tell you when I was in that church in that religion I would have died for it easy not a problem because you're brought up through school and no matter how much you're picked on or any fights you get in or 
the teachers can't stand you and you're, you, you, you are set apart um, because you're different and difficult and they just don't want difficult because you won't do any of the holidays, you know. Check me out, I'm in my work attire. I'm about to go to work. Working for the man. Actually, that man would be me. Work for myself, I do. Oh yeah, so what do I say? Um, the day, <laughs> the day a thousand kids in my school and they all stand up for a national anthem. You walk in, you sit down, massive assembly, and then everyone has to stand up for the national anthem. And you don't, because you don't stand up for the national anthem, people. That was a difficult day. Yeah, remember that day. So, yeah, difficult. No wonder I got the teachers didn't like us, or me. Anyway, moving on. So you are, from infancy, taught to stand up for what you believe in. So when you actually do get to the point where you say this is the one thing that twigs you to go, hmm, maybe this isn't the truth, and you, ver you verbalise your belief system, you go, hang on a minute, this is not right because of this or that. Not just, I believe this or I believe that. You get the facts out. And they tell you to shut up. They tell you, don't talk about that. Can't talk about that. And you're like, well, hang on a minute. Let's get the Bible out. Let's uh, get the Google machine. Uh, and let's talk about this. No, they don't talk about it. I remember the last time I spoke to my mother, she, uh, we were having a discussion and she stood up quite angry and stuck her fingers in her ears and went, la, 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 I don't want to hear this. So they make us apostates because we're going to stand up for truth once we find it. So it's easy to say, ah, oh, well, I was born into it. Yeah, uh, there's a lot of history there. Many years of being different, being odd one out and having to deal with that, especially when there's nobody in your congregation at the same age. So, uh, yeah, I just verbalised that. I'm just like, well, yeah, I did all right. I can imagine how some people don't do all right. But me personally, you know, water for ducks back, get on with it. Didn't really, I don't dwell on the negative, I just get on with it, you know. So yeah, let us uh, proceed. How was your childhood? Oh, my childhood was pretty good. Pretty good. See, when you're brought up thinking something's normal, you don't know it's not normal. So, I suppose if you're born up Amish, you think that's normal. When you're a kid, if you're born up being a racist, you know that's normal. Until one day, uh, 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 I don't know. Yeah, I thought it was normal. We were always separate from the other kids. Um, but I was part of a big family. One of five kids, I am. One of five kids. Yeah, we didn't do birthdays or Christmas. Didn't really miss it, to be quite honest. We used to do an anniversary of my mum and dad's wedding. That was a bit like Christmas. We all got presents. That was nice. We're just a dad's a mechanic, We're just a humble family. And back then, we didn't have social media and all that, so I was outside all the time, just. I learned how to weld when I was really, really young and used to make bikes and play down the river and just keep ourselves occupied, you know. It was a good, I, used to, I had a good upbringing, I had no complaints. I mean, I had my cousins who were witnesses, so I knocked around with them and then there was a couple of mates at school I could see a little bit of, but yeah, there was no worries. I was baptised when I was 16 years of age. Side point to that, I got re-baptised about a month ago now, two months ago, because I didn't realise when I got baptised at 16, no one really forced me. It's the dumb thing. It always hangs over your head. So I was talking to my niece about this. She woke up very early. She woke up at like 18 or 16, 17. And uh, I still wasn't woken up at that stage. So yes, shunning did happen. But luckily, we've now reconnected, which is nice. 
But in relation to baptism, she said, hey, there was a heap of pressure to be baptised. Heaps of pressure. I was like, really? She goes, yeah. Like, there's people getting baptised at 11 and 10. Oh, no, I got, I got baptised at 9. Went, but I thought that was a joke. I thought, I'm 90 years old. Jesus was 29, mate. But, yeah, it is a thing. So, I personally didn't feel any pressure, but it definitely was whooshed, hang, hanging over your head that that's what you do. So, she wanted me to clarify that. So, it's clarified. <laughs> um... But I didn't do it because anyone forced me to do it. I thought, oh, well, I believe in God. Um, but I got rebaptized because I didn't realize that they believe it's a, a verbal contract with them. So if you ever go to court or anything like that, it's a verbal contract. And then you look at the wording of your baptism and it's nothing like the Bible. It's nothing like the Bible. And I thought, well, I wonder if I'm really baptized or not properly. So we did it in a body of water, like the Ethiopian. Didn't have a chariot that turned up in a car. Yes. Believe it or not, I know I don't look a day over 48, but I'm now 49. And I was in, I was baptized, idiot, not baptized. I was at Jehovah's Witness till I was 46 years of age. 46 years, there you go, long time. Now that's a funny question. When did you start waking up? Well, when did I start waking up? That's a good question, mate. Because it, once you're woken up, you go, wow, I think that might have started like 15 years ago. In the last 10 years, the society has changed immensely from what it was. Back then, things were simple. Anyone saw 1914, ain't gonna die. It's only a matter of time. The anointed number was going down. Got down to 8,000 and something. Yeah, I just want to jump in here as well. It has changed immensely. The congregation used to be pretty good. Back in the day, we'd have barbecues together. We'd go to the park together. You know, we used to hang out together. We actually were a brotherhood. Then the powers that be, these freaks of nature that live in a bubble, that everything's handed to them, uh, apparently, as Joe Publisher, you don't hear this, but the elders go, yeah, no. But yeah, no, we don't do that anymore. Kind of large gatherings, can't do that. You know, we even had like a very large block of land in our Kingdom Hall with a barbecue. And they banned using it. You know, weird. But yeah, along with what I was just saying, you know, it was easy back then. Anyone who saw 1914 ain't gonna die. And you know what upsets me about that? I'll tell you what upsets me about that is I now am a liar because I can tell you any person who had ears on the side of their head that was near me, I told them about that. And the amount of doors I knocked on and I said, you know what, uh, this generation of mine means pass away, you know. And now I'm a liar, you know, and I don't like lying. And I can't understand how your family and your parents don't see that it's like overlapping generations. That's what we're at now. Really? You know, years spent going door to door speaking a lie. Yeah. Anyway, sorry to keep jumping in, but... Uh, <laughs> just, I was just thinking about that, like I was watching, I was like, oh, I might just say that. Anyway, thank you. Let's go. Let's keep going. And, um, yeah, but in the last 10 years, things started happening. Weird things. You know, I think when they started saying from the stage that you like to have sex with men and women if you've got a goatee beard, um, Another thing was when they said bad associations, even in the congregation, there's a real division, a real scared, um, not vibe, uh, environment. There's a really scared environment they started bringing in. So not only did you have to watch out 
in the world, kind of any two people in the world, oh, what's yeah, what's in the congregation as well. And I'm like, hang on a minute. I just want to jump in here too. Um, in relation to that, what I was saying, you know, they, they brought out watchtowers. This is around the 2016 mark. You know, they said, even in the congregation, you're going to watch who you hang out with, you know. It's like, it really offended me. Those, that couple of years, it's like, okay, it, I couldn't believe the division that was, the environment that was bringing to the congregation. At a watchtower, I put my hand up, and they said, yes, Brother Aaron. And I said, uh, because let's face it, every congregation, there's many, I don't want to be derogatory here, but there's unique people that don't really go well in society that Jehovah's Witnesses will accept anybody. So when they come knocking on door, they embrace it. But socially and in modern society, they're left of center, a little bit different. If you know what I'm saying, could, could label these people. We could do that, but we won't. But needless to say, when these watchtowers were coming out, all of these people, these special people, oh, they all had their hand up saying, yeah, people even watch MA movies. MA, can you believe it? Oh, went to a party and they had alcohol. Oh. And I'm sitting, in the, I'm sitting in the meeting and this one particular watchtower is about bad association in the congregation. These are our brothers, are they not? Aren't they the ones we're supposed to be helping? Then anyway, I put my hand up. Yes, brother. The last comment of the meeting to it was, yes, brother. And I said, oh, I know bad association spoils useful habits, but there's another scripture in Proverbs that says, uh, he who well, walks with wise people will become wise. So rather than judging our brothers, shouldn't we like be looking to help our brothers, you know, like show love and build them up? Well, that didn't go down well. Went over like a lead balloon, actually. So the brother taking the home, the, the watchtower, who is a specimen, uh, yeah, he took offence to that and made a bit of an issue about that. At the Kingdom Hall, basically, he said, I had to shut up and follow the watchtower. He said, well, what does the watchtower say? Maybe we should be saying, what does the Bible say? Just putting it out there. Another couple of weird things while I'm talking about it. The Grey Bible. Why did we bring in the Grey Bible? We're always told that our Bible is the best version. I've since found out it's corrupted. Um, but no one in our congregation knew that that Bible was coming. Probably the elders did. We've got a secret letter about that. But why bring it in? Uh, that's one thing I didn't understand. We had the Black Bible. And what I liked about the Black Bible, if you could remember one, one, like, no one's got, well, there are people with photographic memory. I'm not one of them. Um, so if you could remember one word out of the scripture, you could find that scripture with the reference in the back. And I used, to, I used to like that at the door, you'd be at the door, and you'd be having a good Bible discussion, rarely, because most people tell you to get lost. But when you did, you could have a chat and remember a word, and you can go for hours. But then they got rid of all that with the Grey Bible. Anyway, it's funny. I, I kept using the Black Bible after the Grey Bible came out, and many, many comments were made about that. Like, why are you using that Bible? The elders don't like that. Why? It's a Bible. That was another weird moment. What about locking the front gates? We live in a town, don't have crime much at all where we live. Fair enough, if you live in the Bronx, I can understand you lock the gates. But we started locking the gates and the doors. The entrance and exit doors. And I was like, what's this about? It was a letter from the society. Apparently, word on the street, some people didn't follow that, some congregations, but ours did, Be religiously. Ha! <laughs> in the kingdom all religious. Anyway, that was weird. I thought that was really strange. Started, it's a public meeting, and you're locking people in. Weird. Just for reference, what other churches or religion is doing that in the world? You might know someone in your area. But I don't know anybody, oh, I don't know any other church that does that. Correct me if I'm wrong in the comments. But there was a time when we were asked to remove older books out of our libraries. And I thought, why are they doing that? That's weird. 
uh, through that whole situation. We were at the 2016 uh, assembly, lots of videos. Love the videos, gotta be honest with you. But then they started saying things like this. So you probably remember this. Only baptized Jehovah's Witnesses have any um, sound basis for believing they will be saved. And then the whole video about like the gun people coming in, the government against you. Fair enough with the gun thing, okay. But after that assembly, they had the uh, memorial and they said the same thing. And that was a televised spe speech, so a talk. It was global, right? So it wasn't individual brothers giving the talk. And that's, they said it again, only baptized Jehovah's Witnesses. So you better get baptized. And I'm sitting in the audience over those couple of years, every time this freakish stuff come out, totally different message to the Bible. And I'm just looking, I'm like, I'm doing these ones. I'm like, uh, am I the only one hearing this? Because everyone's like going, uh, nodding along. And I'm like, you're not Jesus, mate. How are you going to be judging? You, Jesus says, do not judge. But anyway, that was some of the weird things that started happening. Also, I got marked because of that answer. I found out, so all my privileges were sort of taken. And then I asked to meet the body of elders. Right, my dad is an elder. And I said, dad, I want to talk to the elders because every local needs we had for a two year period were about money. Because uh, this one brother who was a, a, in charge of the congregation wanted to have a renovation. This is just before we gave all, everyone gave all their money to the society. You know, that, that thing that happened. So I got brought up that Charles Taze Russell said that if we ever need to ask for money, we know God's not behind it. So I'm like, this is what I've been taught, people. We've all been taught this. You don't need to ask for money because if God wants to happen, it's going to happen. Anyway, every local, every local needs was about money. So I said, you know what? Yeah, I've talked to these fellas. The Bible says... You know, if you've got a problem and you want to stick amongst you, call the elders together and they'll anoint you with oil. So I thought, you know what? Hey, Dad, I want to... Oh, the circuit overseer's coming. I want to have a chat with the elders. In a kind manner. Because the weird shit that was going down in the congregation, I was like, bro, everyone's talking about it, but no one's talking to the elders about it. Let's talk, you know? Well, that was a big mistake. Because once again, I got marked because I'm a troublemaker. The Bible says to talk to the elders, and I wanted to talk to the elders. Try doing it. If you're still a witness, try and call the elders together in your congregation. In your congregation. See how you go. Then you'll see that what's in the Bible and what happened in reality, two different things. Totally different things. So there were many weird things. I don't want to keep going on and on and on about it, but I'll tell you what, one of the, one of the things I learned when I was researching, which I find the weirdest, is there is, is you know, as anyone knows who researches in Australia, there was a thousand and six pedophile recorded cases, and none got report none got reported to police. Right, that's in Australia. They have now proven, and it's well known if you're not a witness, that they have a list of pedophiles in America. They probably have it in every country. I don't know about that, but I do know America has it. United States, I should say. And they won't, even though they've lost in court to give the list over, they won't give the list of pedophiles. Now, <clears throat> why? Why would you not just go, here you go, fellas, there's the list. Why? That. I've got, re I've got reasons I think they wouldn't give it over, but that's, there's no fact. But the facts are, you've got a list, you won't hand it over. <laughs> Mate, so that's pretty weird. That's really, I'll, I'll finish with the weird, we'll move on, okay? Sorry. But needless to say, there was some weird, weird stuff that went on for a very long time. Yeah, we'll talk about that. I think we talk about that later. Anyway, let's go. <sighs> anyway, I'll get off my soapbox. I'll just take a Valium. Calm down. On with the show. Anyway, there were many things, but the final point for me 
the final point for me is I needed some spiritual help from the elders. I was a ministerial servant. They were talking about making me an elder. And they treated it like it was a promotion, you know? And for me, I never was interested in that promotion. I, I knew it was not that, or it shouldn't be that. I know a lot of people treated it like that. My dad got my ministerial servant when he was 50 or something, and he never did anything different. It was just him. And I liked that. That's what I tried to do. So they're talking about making me an elder and there's some stuff happened in my life earlier, years earlier, that I went to see the elders about and I didn't think it got resolved properly. So I was a ministerial servant. Um, I was doing a lot in the congregation. I was doing literature, sound booth. I was in the maintenance committee because I'm a carpenter. I was looking after that. I was taking the groups for witnessing. I organised the card. Um, I was doing talks, but I only ever gave one public talk because that's pretty well when I wanted to see the elders. Went to see the elders expecting spiritual help because the Bible says, go see the elders and I'll anoint you with oil. Um, and I was flabbergasted to be quite honest. They were more concerned about my position. Uh, they were not spiritual at all. And I went through six of them. I found it to be very disheartening, but I was still away, still in at that stage, I was still in, and then um, I went away, and I had a beard when I came back, nearly trimmed, and then they invited me to be on the cart, because while I was away, someone else was looking after the cart, roster, and I thought, oh, that's nice, and I was pretty low at this point, after, uh, with what went on, I stopped being a minister of servant and I was sort of just in limbo. It wasn't well. Yeah, so I had a beard, neat and tidy, and they asked me to build a cart. And I thought, like, wow, that'll help me out, that's good. And then they said, we have to come and see you. And I thought they'd come out to my house. So I said, yeah, come on out. And I said, at that point, I still believed that they cared. And they said, no, you've got to come into the hall. Long story short, they said only exemplary Christians can be on the car. Because I had a beard, they were saying I wasn't an exemplary Christian. And that pretty well was the straw that broke the camel's back. The, camel, the straw that broke the camel's back was that. Because I was like, something seriously wrong here. Seriously. And it had been ticking away at me bit by bit over the years, you know, things, the way you saw people behaving, you're always all people, by people, it's not the organisation, wait on Jehovah, what a load of rubbish, because by their fruits you will know them, they are good people, but they're all deceived, anyway, I came out of that elders meeting, and I thought, surely I'm not the only one who feels like this, what is going on, and so, I, <laughs> believe it or not, went on the internet and I found a book, Crisis of Conscience, right? Which, here's a guy, 42 years full-time minister, and um, he was on the governing body for 11 years. So I'm thinking, this guy, he's got pretty good credentials. I'm gonna have a, something happen for him to leave. I'm gonna find out what that's about. And I read that, could not put it down. And then after that, I allowed myself to look at YouTube. I thought, well, I'd never allowed myself to look. And so I looked, and then I started researching, and I went down a huge rabbit hole. And that's when I woke up, yeah. And it takes a while, it takes years to wake up fully, like, the more the layers you go through, you go, whoa, whoa, whoa. What I couldn't handle, the falling off a chair moment was when in court, the brothers say that normal family relationships occur when you're disfellowshipped. My brother got kicked out when he was 16 of our house for five years until he was broken. Yeah. I've had many family members disfellowshipped. It ain't normal family relationships, I'll tell you that. And it's not individual families doing it. They're following what they're told to do by the watchtower. And you don't have to be very bright to find that information. So yeah, that's when I woke up. I was just 
when you allow yourself to research, you're going to wake up. As far as their family members are concerned, normal family relations continue with the exception of spiritual fellowship. I tried to contact them. I just wanted to talk and to hear their voice. I missed being with my family. And they thought about reaching out to me. But they knew that if they had associated with me, even a little, just to check on me, that small dose of association might have satisfied me. As the meeting progressed with Mr. Wall, the elders came to the decision that Mr. Wall was not sufficiently repentant for his disgraceful conduct, and the congregation elders took the decision to disfellowship him. That word is used by Jehovah's Witnesses. They, Jehovah's Witnesses don't use the word shun or shunning. They refer to it as disfellowship, disfellowshipping, disfellowshipped, because that really gives the, the, the sense of what's taking place within this particular religious community. Disfellowship literally means no further spiritual fellowship with the, with the individual. And as I point out, sorry, Chief Justice, as I point out at paragraph 22 of my factum, the, the nature of the relationship then of a disfellowship person is not completely shunned. It is not completely shunned. Our son Levi was no longer one of Jehovah's Witnesses. I was disappointed in Levi for leaving Jehovah. As hard as the past few weeks had been, it just got harder. I knew what the Bible said about quit mixing in company with anyone who is not living according to Christian standards. As far as their family members are concerned, Normal family relations continue with the exception of spiritual fellowship. So without stating the obvious, oh well I will state the obvious, what he just said. He's a brother, an elder actually, from uh, Canada. You can research that gentleman, David Ganan, with a G, but it's not silent. Uh, what he's saying there is completely false and he knows it. And it's a lie. And I look forward to the day that he is exposed for that lying tongue in his mouth. And if you're watching this Brosevsky, you should be ashamed of yourself. When I started doing the research thing, you know, I started finding these things. Witnesses won't do it. They are brainwashed not to research. There's a reason for that. Because when you start seeing crap like that, you know, bro, that offended me. I literally fell off my chair. Then it's just, that is one of many. If you're a witness and watching this, allow yourself to research, bro. Honestly. Anyway, uh, I'll, uh, I'll jump in in a minute about something else. Is it recording? Yes. I'm having some trouble. I'm having trouble with this thing. Ah. <sighs> Not very professional video this but hey it's from the heart okay it's not a production okay all right oh, hang on there we go so i put these fellas in simply for clickbait to get people to watch my video good boys good boys these are the guard dogs barry and stanley Okay, you've done your job, boys. Thank you very much. Thank you. Kizzy kizzy. Okay. Good. Ah, nothing like exploitation. Works every time. Look, 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 look. I just gotta show you. I gotta show you this. This is what they look like. Look. Oh, you're unhappy. I've just been exploited. Terrible. <laughs> Um, where was I? Oh yeah, marriage failed. Anyone knows that if you're a witness and you go, oh, I don't really agree with this, uh, your life will change because there is no in-between. You're either a witness or you're not. You're either with us or against us. And anyone who says differently to that is not telling the truth. And I knew that I would probably, because I've seen other people who their partner is not a winner, 
And it's even worse, so fair enough, they never came in. But me, or well, you know, unless you're a servant, I'm leaving. You know it's gonna be weird. And another thing, if you're truthful, and say you are at a barbecue, and people go, oh, isn't it great to be in the truth? I, oh, I could just ignore that, I suppose. But, I'd have to go, well, it's not really the truth, is it? Because it isn't. They use loaded language like that, they call it the truth. It is not the truth. And so you know that over time, they'll dwindle away, the witnesses, and you won't get invited. And you'll be a shadow in your own life, in your own house. And then your friends that are worldly, they'll, you know, it's very involved anyway. Okay, so it's been a few years, so basically, if I want to put it into like a nutshell, many, 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 many years, weird little crap would happen, and you'd push it in the back of your mind, you'd go, oh, no, that ain't right. But you know what, it's the truth, the closest thing to the truth. I used to say that to people, mm. that's the closest thing to the truth. And so you push these things to your, the back of your mind. Now, a minute ago I was saying, as you know, a question things, I was marked, a question things, I was marked, but I just kept going. They'd give you a job, you do it. They'd give you another job, you do it. They'd give you another job, you do it. Because you just asked, you know what I mean? The next minute, you were, uh, they, they announced you as ministerial servant. And now, I haven't allowed myself to talk about this because it's very close to my heart. I say, oh, I'm a marriage child. The truth of the matter is, <clears throat> the truth of the matter is, I should never have married that person, and I knew it, and I tried to call it off two weeks before we married. So in the video then, I go, oh, a lot of stuff was going down. I was pretty low at this point, after, uh, with what went on, I stopped being a ministerial servant, and I sort of sent him back. It wasn't well. This is what was going down. Putting up with it all, I got to a point. For 26, 26 years, I was living really unhappily, like really unhappily, like unhappily. So it wasn't the religion that broke us up. It's just, what happened was, I had a total mental breakdown, which a bloke in Australia doesn't normally talk about that. He just go to work and get on with it. But a total mental breakdown and ended up in a mental institution. So yes, I was a ministerial servant. I'd gone through all that other crap, just kept going, made me a ministerial servant. I was a ministerial servant only for about a year and a half, two years. Then they started talking about me being an elder. And there was stuff in the past due to being unhappily married. I never played up, never played around. But an uh, incident happened that I dobbed myself in for. I used to dob myself in for everything. And the, the elders basically said, fobbed me off. They said, nah. But because I was suffering depression, and because I was so unhappy, and because of the crap going down in the congregation, I was like, what is wrong with me? What, what is wrong with me? Turns out nothing wrong with me, actually. Turns out putting up with a terrible situation for 26 years that I hated, and then breaking down and going to a mental institution. Twice they blocked me out. Then I came out of that mental institution, that's when I had the beard. Not, not, not this, it was neat and tidy, you know, I tried to keep it neat and tidy. And so when they asked me to be on the cart, I actually thought they cared about me. I actually thought they were helping me spiritually. Nothing could be further from the truth. Nothing could be further from the truth. These men are not spiritual. Even my dad is not an elder because of any other reason that you start to be in a boys club a buffalo club you get to know all the ins and outs of all the goss and you know it's my video while i'm talking about it the whole secret elders letters they get letters that the congregation doesn't get the, the more you find out about it the more you learn nah, this is just not on so you stand up that's when you lose your family that's when you lose everything anyway so that's what happened it's the first time I've talked about it, and here I am putting it on YouTube. Well, you know what? Let's put it out there. It is the truth. You can't handle the truth! And, you know, can't do much about the truth, can you?
Yeah, it is what it is. I have been married. I've, I've, I've since met a person and got married. You know what? That person that's there. There. I am happy for the first time in my life. I was doing, I was living my life for other people and trying to do the right thing. The right thing. Not by me, by everyone else. And I couldn't do it. And now I am happy. Really happy. I am in love. For the first time in my love. I won't sing. But let's get on with the movie. <laughs> But yeah, no, I wasn't just fellowship. I wrote a letter of disassociation. So there you go. Uh, how was, has a leaving affected you? How has leaving affected me? Well, like I said before, uh, my family knows who long to speak to me. Your whole social network no longer speaks to me. So you're on your own. I think they, it's tough love is what they're trying to do. But, the, you know, Joe's publisher is just doing what he's told to do. So how has it affected me? It was, it was devastating, really. Pretty well. Yep. For uh, a couple of years. And then you come out the other side, it, it does get better. It does get better. Slowly but surely. Yes. So, but... Another way it's affected me is I'm very, very happy that I found the truth, the actual truth. I'm glad I found out the truth about the truth. Um, I'm closer now. I still believe in God and Jesus. I feel closer to them than I ever have. My life is really, really good now. I've got a new partner, a wife, soon to be. And, yeah, I'm not afraid anymore. I'm not worn out and bolted down, and I'm not afraid of Armageddon. I'm not afraid of it at all. I believe that something is coming. Will it be in my lifetime? Who knows? I don't. Just be good to other people, that's all I try to. My advice to people just starting to wake up is. Who am I to give advice to anybody, really? Or no one. Uh, my advice, I don't have advice. Who am I to advise anyone? All I can say is my experience. In my experience, it gets better. You will be happier, but you will have to pay the price of losing your entire network, especially if you're born in, especially if your whole family's in. You're gonna be disowned. Unless you know the super liberal, super moderate, you might be lucky one. Um, but yeah, don't, you'll never regret it. Never. If you're being lied to and you find out about it, you never regret it. You're like, oh, I'd rather know the truth. Some people don't want to know the truth. They'd rather take the what's it, blue pill or red pill, whichever one. They go, wish I'd never woken up. For me, I'm really, really happy I woke up. And so I would say to people who are waking up, who are going through a tough time, it does get better, it does get easier, but it is tough. So reach out there, reach out to former friends that left the truth that you may have shunned. I did that, I shunned, but I'm now in contact with former friends, you know. Um, it does get easier. So I just wanted to put in a nutshell why I'm no longer Jehovah's Witnesses. Because when you leave, you, you well, I personally constantly second guess myself. I was like, am I doing the right thing here? Am, you know, am I being misled or misguided? Have I been deceived? You know, because after being deceived for so long, it's like, that's not what I want right now. I want to find the truth, you know? So in just to put in a nutshell why I don't believe that that organization, Jehovah's Witnesses, um, is the truth, is their behavior, basically. So teaching that Jesus is not my mediator, 
you know, I did not even know. All those years I was, in, I was a witness, I didn't know that that's what they taught. But that's in direct conflict with the Bible. I'm not going to have you saying things in direct conflict with the Bible. I'm going to go by the Bible. Sorry about that. Saying that only Jehovah's Witnesses will be saved. That's another red flag for me. You shouldn't say that. It's not nice. It's not your job to say that. Everything you told me, that I've told millions of people at the door, not millions, I'm not that good, that it hasn't come true. All your prophecies, everything you said, and even now, it's not true. It's constantly failing. Deuteronomy 18 talks about that. Rewriting you or deleting evidence of what you've said in the past. Like, that's it. You can find that. Once again, being deceitful. Misquoting things. Like in the, um, what, what's that? Reason from the scriptures about the cross. Look up, look up the quotations in the encyclopedias. Whoever did that and, and researched it for that book knew <laughs> that they stopped halfway through a paragraph. That changed the complete point of the person who wrote it. Then you let it go into print. Then I'm assuming there's a team of people. You misleading people. It's terrible. You know, and it goes on, on lying in court, lying in the Australian Royal Commission. Paul and Peter didn't lie. They had the truth, so they stood up for the truth. I can't, can't be dealing with lying like that. You know, so as I've thought about it, and as I've researched, it's become clearer and clearer. You know, we're all faithful and discreet slaves. We, I believe in the kingdom of God, and I, anyone who will listen to me, I'll talk to them about it. It's really easy. It's a simple message in a Bible for simple people. And that is, love your neighbor, love God. It's pretty basic. You can add to that, but you know, for you who don't, for you who don't believe in God, don't worry about it. God is love. But if it's true, what we think is going to happen, you come back. Explain your case. It's all about your heart. You'll be fine. I don't think there'll be any problems. So, in conclusion, I get that from my days at theocratic ministry school. In conclusion, brothers. <laughs> When I was going through that phase of waking up and realizing that not everything, you, I used to say everything you got taught. Well, it's not everything I got taught was false because I used the Bible. And so some things would have been true, was are true, like every religion who uses the Bible. But very important things, core beliefs, when you find out that they're not true, I, that's, I gotta tell you, I found that very hard. I'm a carpenter and I'm on site crying. You know what I mean? It really affected me, i got to tell you. It affected me to, for that whole house of cards to come down. I was like, what? Really? Whoa. Anyway, so I got onto videos. I started watching some videos and some people really helped me. And they were, uh, XJW Fifth was awesome. Uh, Wall, uh, Wally from JW Thoughts, loving your work. XJ Crit Critical Thinker. Um, Eric Wilson from Berean Pickets, uh, Lloyd Evans, um, and also XJ Curious Pete. Now, some people don't believe in God anymore. Doesn't matter. None of my business. I do. But um, the fact that we can all respect each other's views and do our life doing what we do and not judging, great. But those videos helped me. And uh, also seeing all the people putting videos online with the shared experience, the same experience. It helps so much. And so I'm hoping that this helps somebody to know that we're not monsters. You know, you lose every, well, some of us lose everything. Yeah, everything, man. And you've got to restart. And that is hard. But I want to let you know, if you're going through it, stick with it because now whether you believe or not i personally believe and i have met some wonderful christians worldwide while i've been traveling i just got back from three and a half months overseas uh, africa and middle east and earlier in the year i went to hawaii 
and along the way you meet Christians, you know, just Christians. And I think that the connection is unbelievable, something I would never have expected um, when I was Jehovah's Witness. So if you're going through that journey and, and you're struggling, stick with it. It gets better, it really does. It takes time and time can be hard to deal with. But um, just know that you will heal, you will heal. Um, and I know when you, that's probably the last thing you need to hear right now. You're like, oh God. But when I was at the bottom, a wonderful lesson actually, when in hindsight, you're like, wow, that taught me a lot. And now I am a different human being than when I was a witness. You know, I'm much, much happier because I haven't taken on the burden of judging people. I'm just like, you know what, man? You do you, I'll do me. Uh, and I do express my faith. I have, a, I have a very large faith, actually. So I hope this video helps you. And I wish you the very, very best wherever you might be. And um, thank you very much for watching this video. I appreciate it.